In this video, I'll go through the Year 7 Fractions Test Preview. I'll put some time tags in the description below so that you can skip to the question numbers that you need help with if you're following along with the test preview. Otherwise, I'll put a bit of a description about what each question's about so that you can search for types of questions if you'd like some help. Question 1's asking me to complete pairs of equivalent fractions. And equivalent fractions are fractions that are in equal in proportion to one another. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to have a look at this 5 and I'm going to see how I would have turned it into a 20. And I would do that by making it 4 times bigger. But anything that I do to the bottom of a fraction, I have to do to the top in order to make it equivalent or comparable. So 3 times 4 is 12. That means that 3 fifths are equivalent to 12 twentieths. In the second example, I have a look at the 2, and I think, how is that made into a 16? It's done that by making it 8 times bigger. Anything I do to the top, I'll have to do to the bottom. So that means that 2 thirds is equivalent to 16 20 fourths. Question 2 is similar to question 1. We're looking for equivalent fractions, but we're looking for them in their simplest form. So what I need is a common denominator, the lowest common denominator for each of the numbers. So I have a look at the numbers 6 and 9, and I think what number will go into both of those? 2 won't, so I'll try 3. 3 will go into 6 2 times, and it will go into 9 3 times. So the simplest equivalent fraction is 2 thirds. When I have a look at the second one, I can see that 2 will go into both of those numbers. It will go into 2 once, and it will go into 22 11 times. Question 3 wants us to turn these fractions into mixed numbers. So one good way of thinking about this is this is equivalent to 5 fifths and 4 fifths. Because altogether, I've got 5 plus 4 making 9 fifths. And so every time we've got a full 5 fifths, we've got 1 and 4 fifths left over. So if we have a look at the second one, we've got 7 sevenths, we've got another 7 sevenths, we've got another 7 sevenths, and another 7 sevenths. So in other words, we've got 28 sevenths so far, and another 6 left over. And so if you want to move this into a, a mixed number, I've got 1, 2, 3, 4. holes and six sevenths left over. Now a nice cheeky way of doing this would be to, um, if you want a shorter version, is how many times is seven going to make it into 34? Well four sevenths would make 28 and then I've got six left over. So that's another way to think about it if you want a faster method. In question 4, we've got to move in the opposite direction to what we did in question 3. So we're turning mixed numbers into improper fractions. So really what we're looking at here, if we think about it, is we've got the 1 here, which is 5 of 5 parts, plus an extra 1 of 5 parts, which would give me 6 fifths altogether. So if we have a look at that again in the second one, we would have all three of three parts plus all three of three parts plus all three of three parts plus all three of three parts. And that makes up the four holes. And we've got two thirds left over. So in total, what we've got is 12 plus 2, which is 14 thirds. And again, if you're looking for a faster method to answer these, then I would be looking at as 4 times 3 is 12, plus this extra 2 makes 14 
thirds, always leaving the denominator, which is the bottom of the the number at the bottom, the same. In question five, it's asking us to find the lowest common denominator, remembering that the denominator is the number at the bottom. Okay, and then we've got to try and work out which of these two is the largest fraction. So what you might start doing is working out what the denominators of these two numbers are. So 1 times 6 is 6, 2 6 is a 12, 3 6 is a 18, 4 6 is a 24. And then do the same for the 9. 1 9 is 9, 2 9 is 18. And it looks like we've found our lowest common denominator, which is 18. So now what we're going to do is we're going to work out what these equivalent fractions of these two numbers would be. So how did I turn 6 into an 18? I multiplied it by 3, so I have to do the same to the top. So the equivalent fraction of this is 15 on 18. And then I have a look over here and say, what did I have to do to 9 to turn it into an 18? I had to times it by 2, so I have to do the same to the top. So this one's equivalent fraction is 14 18 and so now it's nice and clear to me that 5 sixths is the larger of these two fractions. Question 6 builds on question 5. We need to work out what the lowest common denominator of these two fractions is in order to solve this. The alternative is to use the butterfly method and it's sort of going to look like that anyway because the lowest common denominator is going to be 12. But what we do is we, we have a look at the denominators and we try and work out what the lowest common denominator of each of those is. So 1, 3 is 3, 2, 3 is a 6, 3, 3 is a 9, 4, 3 is a 12. And we'll do the same over here. We've got 1, 4 is 4, 2, 4 is a 8, 3, 4 is a 12. Okay, so we found our lowest common denominator. How do I turn a 3 into a 12? I times it by 4. So anything I do to the bottom, I've got to do to the top. And that means that this fraction is now 4 twelfths. And what did I do to a 4 to make it a 12? I times it by 3. Anything I do to the bottom, I've got to do to the top. And so now I've got 9 twelfths. Now that these two fractions have got the same number at the bottom, the same denominator, I'm allowed to compare them and add them together. So 9 plus 4 makes 13, and we keep the groups of 12, okay, so that we keep the 12 at the bottom. If you want to do this one by the butterfly method, it looks a little bit different. The butterfly method is good if you're learning how to do these but eventually it's not a very efficient technique so I wouldn't probably recommend this but if you need to see a strategy to get you through this what you can do is that times that which gives you 4 that times that which gives you 9 and that times that which gives you 12 and then you add them together the same way now that looks slightly faster problem with using this strategy long term is that you can end up having to deal with some very, very big numbers. Okay, So this strategy over here on the left is better because eventually you'll be able to do this part in your head and it'll be quite fast. Question 7 builds on question 6. When we're adding and we're subtracting fractions, we need a common denominator. That means the number at the bottom has to be the same. I talked a little bit in question 6 about why the butterfly method isn't the best approach. And this is a great example of that because what you'd be dealing with is 50ths and the numbers would be huge. What I would like to do is I would like to turn this 5 into a 10 and then I'll have common denominators, which means that if I just double this, and remember that anything I do down the bottom I've got to do to the top, I have got fractions with common denominators to work with. I've got 9 tenths, take away 2 tenths, and that leaves me with 7 tenths. 
So you can see here that if I tried to do the butterfly method, what I would end up with is um, 45 fiftieths and um, 10 fiftieths, which I would then have an answer of 35 fiftieths, which I then have to work out the equivalent fraction of, and it all becomes quite hard. So I would say that you would be far better trying to get your head around this um, method rather than the butterfly method. Question eight's a great one. Multiplication of fractions is fantastic. You just do top times top, which is 12, and bottom times bottom, which is 28. And if you can simplify it by finding common factors of 12 and 28, then um, we would see that 4 goes into both of those numbers. So 4 goes into 12 three times, and it goes into 28 seven times. It's a funny looking 7. Now, just as a side note, if you're not uh, strong with your multiplication, um, when you landed at this point here, so if I just drag this down here, and you had 12 28s, what you can do is you can just keep dividing them by two um, until you can't go any further. So you, you could do half of 12 is 6, and half of 28 is 14, half of 6 is 3, and half of 14 is 7, and you'd get to the same answer. There's a couple of ways of doing question 10, but I would start this by turning these into improper fractions. So I'd go 2 9s are 18, plus 2 is 20 ninths, and I'd go 4 twos are 8, plus this one is 9, 9 halves. And then I would make the denominator, remember that's the number at the bottom here, the same, so they're going to have to be 18 so I'll double the top and bottom of this side, and I will times by 9 on this side. So my equivalent fractions that I can add together would be 40 eighteenths and 81 eighteenths. And now that the denominators are the same, I can just add these together, which gives me 121 eighteenths. And that's my final answer. There's a little trick to question 11 to make it a bit easier for you. Remember way back up here in question 9, the one straight above it, how we just made it a times and flipped it? We're going to do the same here. So the first thing I need to do is make this a fraction. And then when I turn this into a multiplication, this just flips upside down. So we'll really end up with 12 over 1 times 4 over 3. Now it's just top times top, bottom times bottom. So this one will be 48 over 3. And we can simplify this fraction because 3 will go into 48. We're going to 4 1 times and we're going to 18 6. So we'll end up with the answer 16. Question 12, uh, it's a worded problem, but let's make it a nice simple one. If Cam had a quarter of a chocolate bar and Sarah had three eighths, how much did they eat altogether? Really what we're asking here is one quarter plus three eighths. We have to make the denominators the same, so let's double four to make it an eight. Anything we do to the bottom, we've got to do to the top. So the real question is two eighths plus three eighths. So all together, they ate five of the eight pieces of chocolate. Question nine's got a little trick to it. It's a division question, but when you see the division of fractions, don't do it. Instead, change it to multiplications because it's much easier, like we saw in question eight. So instead of dividing, I'm going to times, and all I've got to remember to do is flip the second fraction upside down. And so the question becomes, two fifths times four over one, 
and now it's just top times top, bottom times bottom. So two fours are eight, and five ones are five. So the answer is eight fifths.